thank you for the introduction and the opportunity to speak with you today on the assessment and development of human strength and power. So what is the problem? Neuromuscular hypertrophy, strength and power are critical training outcomes, but they are often questioned. It varies between different sports, but in certain, certain activities, certain sports, the, the importance to performance is questioned or whether strength and power training, hypertrophy training will interfere with other aspects of the sports performance or even perhaps reverse other qualities. There are also some sports in which aesthetics are particularly important, such as gymnastics, diving or ballet. And there was a concern that excessive hypertrophy might interfere with the aesthetics. The maintenance of lean body mass, strength and power is a challenge uh, as well, particularly in season and in competition. So these are some of the issues that arise and I'd like to speak with you about these today. So balancing strength, power and endurance and this is a huge challenge for most sports or all sports but matching competition demands with training focus and planning. Time management and also the interference of the strength and power training with skills and tactics training pre presents a challenge as well. The competition schedule and season length which are continually increasing and several athletes will be competing in different, uh, different competitions and different seasons uh, in various parts of the world and this creates a challenge. But the bigger picture is that athlete resilience, avoiding overtraining, career longevity and outcomes beyond purely performance are quite important and have to be balanced. Excessive training volume decreases muscle and bone quality and quantity. It reduces tendon and ligament stiffness. And the concept that optimal fitness can be gained through practice and game plan is overly simplistic. Resilience might be sacrificed in this instance. Testosterone, growth hormone, IGF-1 must be promoted and cortisol limited. Now we know that anabolic work but we have to mimic them legally and this is another very important aspect of strength and power training for our athletes. Is the athlete strong enough to cope? Strength and power training seems lost in some sports. It's sacrificed for aerobic capacity and skills and techniques and I don't want to pick on too many sports but uh, I think that uh, football, the round ball game or soccer in some countries is a good example here. We have to remember that strong and powerful athletes are more 